This tutorial is going to walk through some steps for collaging images of plant material into your Photoshop perspectives. We're going to start by inserting some shrubs in the foreground right here. And to do that, we're going to come over to a uh, picture online, copy this, and paste this into our perspective. Here, we'll actually move it up to the top of the layer stack. Um, and we're going to use Control T to get it uh, roughly the size that we need. Uh, to fill the space that we're trying to work with. I don't want to make it too large, so I'm actually going to use the stamp tool uh, to then just stamp this texture and, and kind of fill in the rest of the area. Now, after I've filled up the scene, I'm going to add a layer mask to this particular layer. We'll add that here, and you can see that it becomes this piece uh, attached to the layer. We're going to fill that layer mask with solid black. That means that all of the contents on this layer are going to go away. And so uh, we'll do that by doing Control Delete to fill with a background color. You can also go to Edit Fill and just choose black. And you got to make sure that you're on the layer mask when you do that. Now at this point what I'm going to do is actually paint back in uh, the shrubs where I want them to go in this scene. And to do that I'm going to paint with white on this layer mask. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to hit B for brush, and we're going to go create a custom brush right here. So we'll go to, uh, I'm going to change this back to just a default brush. We'll go to Window, Brush Settings. And what I'm going to do is choose a brush tip that kind of has a rough edge to it. We'll take this one right here. I'm going to go to the Shape Dynamics and bump up the size jitter a lot, bump up the angle jitter a lot. Turn on Scattering, scatter the brush just a touch and go back to the tip shape and space it out just a little bit too. So once we have this brush, we're gonna come back to our layer mask, uh, change our brush size, make it a little bit larger, and we're gonna paint with white. I've got white as my foreground color, and as I sort of paint in here, I can add back in the shrubs and have them sort of grow and fill uh, the scene. It's always a good practice to kind of click a lot and make sure to go up and down, and kind of fill in where you need these shrubs to go. Now if you've finished putting this in the scene, you might want to uh, still change the size of it or the stamp of it. You can actually uh, unlink these and potentially move this around uh, inside the layer mask. You can also control T to make it larger or smaller. You can even right click inside and say perspective to uh, distort it just a little bit. So there's still edits that you can make just by unlinking them and it doesn't affect the layer mask that you've created. The same thing applies if you wanted to go to image adjustments, hue and saturation, potentially turn down the saturation uh, and the lightness as well to have it fit your scene a little better, potentially move the hue around to change uh, the colors or the tone of that. Uh, and finally you can turn down the opacity as well to help it fit in the scene. With perspective drawings, I always think it's helpful to have a layer uh, like shadows and highlights uh, where you can kind of paint on top just to tie it all back into the scene together. And we've got that with these two layers right here. Now using a photograph of plant material works well in a first person perspective, but there's some other approaches that you can take to an aerial perspective when bringing in shrubs in this case. Uh, we've got areas where we wanna bring in a shrub mass. And to do that, we're gonna create a new layer I'm going to fill that layer with a solid color, in this case, uh, Command Delete to fill in with a background color. And we're going to go to our Blending Options, Pattern Overlay, and select a pattern that looks kind of like plant material. I'll use this right here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this pattern overlay, and we're going to distort it a little bit using Control T and Perspective and Distort uh, to help it match up with the angle of our site. But before we do that, we've got to add a new layer and merge these two layers together by holding shift, clicking both of them, and then command E on your Mac, or you can right click and say merge layers to merge them together. This merges the blending option pattern overlay into uh, that particular layer so that we can control T and begin to edit this through perspective and potentially through distort as well. And your goal is to get it to feel like it's somewhat laying flat on the site that matches up with uh, your perspective. Now I'm going to turn this off. Uh, we'll actually turn it back on and we're going to add a layer mask to it. Much like the last process, we're going to fill it with solid black so that it disappears. And what we'll do is we'll actually zoom in to this part of our model and with that same brush begin to paint white uh, to where it feels like that shrub mask. So I'm going to begin to 
paint in some white here. On the top side, we'll uh, make it appear as if it has some height by going a little bit above uh, the sidewalk. And then, of course, towards the bottom, we'll keep it just shy of the sidewalk right here. I'll even hold down Shift and run it along there. Now, it's always good to be a little, little messy uh, just to reflect how uh, plant material is going to grow almost in a irregular manner. You don't want to be too uniform as you're putting this stuff in. Now there's a couple things you might do to save some time as you're working on this. If you hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, you should be able to click on the layer mask and just see it in the black-white mode. And this allows you to grab your paint bucket and potentially just paint in white right there. I'll click a couple times to help it fill in. And I might need to come back and you know brush in, but it's uh, easier to do this than to just continue to brush in that area. Hold down Option and click on the layer mask again and it fills in this area. You also notice that uh, when you're brushing along the edge of a building, you might need to actually turn that layer off, grab your lasso out, just to recreate this crisp edge right here that is the edge of the buildings. We'll turn it back on, and this puts a marquee right here. We'll do uh, Command Delete to fill in with black, and it creates that sharp edge again. Now, much like the last project, we probably need to get in here and do some highlights and shadows uh, to help it not feel so flat. Uh, but one thing that really helps is just turning down the opacity on this, and you start to see how you can build this, this in uh, to where you're creating shrubs in. Uh, you, uh, for me, I'd probably want to unlink this again, come back to the image, and, uh, and still continue to work on how this is fitting in here through uh, perspective, uh, and you can continue to distort that or even change the size of it, uh, build in more of the perspective. Uh, we could you know, control T this down to make it even smaller. And so you can see how you keep the mask, but you're changing how it is uh, being viewed in here uh, so that you can be uh, more effective in what you are, the plant material that you're putting down to get that shrub-like feel. Uh, but it's certainly a lot easier than uh, you know putting in that mass uh, inside of SketchUp or uh, any other uh, perspective approach. You might consider you know bringing in a picture, whether it's a flat texture in this case or an actual photograph of the plant material, and then uh, masking it away and then rebuilding it with a textured brush to look like the shrubs in your scene.